Hey guys, welcome back to Home Bill. And in this episode, I think it's about time we pulled the engine out of the Rockstar. Okay, so if you haven't seen my previous videos on this car, I'll put a link up uh, above. And if uh, these videos are the sort of things that you're enjoying, uh, please think about uh, subscribing. It does help us out. So. Um, I think today what we're going to do is we're going to give the uh, Rockster finally a little bit of love and pull it out from its sort of uh, little hidey hole under this tree in the backyard and get it in and see if we can get that engine out and find out what actually happened to kill it. All right, so this is the first I've looked under the car since uh, I actually had it at the track and it went uh, bang. But having a look now, you can see that the front part of the engine uh, closest to the cabin is all reasonably dry and doesn't seem to be an issue. The issue seems to be on the right hand side of the engine up inside the, uh, the cavity up in here. So I think I need to start uh, taking off some bits and pieces and digging a bit further and see what we can see. Okay, it's time to get stuck in. So the first thing I need to do is to get the car into the engine service position, which is basically where you sort of, I need a half open up this uh, roof and be able to get into the top part of the engine in here. So uh, let's do it. I've got that open. So now let's uh, pop the boot and see if we can take the rear bumper and stuff off. Gonna be extra fun with these wheel arch flares that are glued on. Okay, so I just undid the plastic clips off of the, uh, the cover for the rear wing. I need to get the rear wing out of the way so I can get to the bolts for the rear bar. Now, a lot of you have, uh, if you've watched my videos for a while, you would have seen that I love this tip. I give it every time I start pulling something apart. Well worth following. Um, instead of putting things in bags, make sure you get some of these just cheap parts boxes and uh, as you take things out in order, you take out the first part, put it in the first box, label it, and then, uh, and then move forward. So then when you go to put everything back together again, you go in reverse order and put the bolts from that, that spot back in there and do it in that uh, process. Makes things much easier when you put things back together again. Another tip that I got recently as well is um, if you've got, um, you know, if you're using a Sharpie to write your um, labels on the box, the easiest way to get old Sharpie off is with a Sharpie. So uh, you actually just, while it's get it nice and wet and then wipe it while it's wet and uh, you get the old stuff off. There we go, nice and clean. So um, I'll label these and uh, we'll keep moving forward. Okay, so the bumper is off, as you can imagine. It's been off before, and there was very little holding it on. Um, same with the uh, engine cover and stuff like that. It's all been apart. This, yeah, it does not surprise me that this car has been messed with previously. So uh, let's uh, continue on. The next thing I need to do is get rid of the uh, passenger seat, and uh, that opens up the, so I can get behind it to get the cover to get to sort of the front edge of the, uh, the engine. So I've got the seat out, but I was just starting to tear out all these wires that are going everywhere through the interior, all for these LEDs and stuff. They're just so much wiring. What a horrible, horrible setup. So I just disconnected the, uh, the wiring harness from the ECU over here and uh, popped the grommet back in so this can uh, get pushed in over to, into the engine bay as we go out. Also want to remove the dipstick. All right, now I'm back in the engine bay. There's a bunch of bits I need to disconnect. The throttle body, um, the uh, oil air separator, there's a earth strap here. Um, all of this stuff is on the uh, Pelican part site, although it is for an S engine. This is um, 
obviously not a non-S, but uh, most of the stuff is pretty similar. You can sort of work it out. All right, so I've disconnected everything I can sort of uh, reasonably see at the top, uh, including loosening up the air conditioning compressor. Now it's time to get rid of this, uh, this cover plate here and these aluminium side support bars. Uh, let's get them out and also we need to disconnect the rear sway bars. Oh, oh, look at that. That's not good. That's not good. All right, well, I don't know about you guys, but when I normally pull an exhaust off a car, I don't expect to have an enormous puddle of oil pour out of it. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, I'm not sure how the oil would have got into the exhaust like that, but um, yeah, not a great sign. <laughs> not a great sign. Um, the other side, the side that's actually quite oily up here, um, is quite dry in the exhaust, but this side is not good. That's telling me, I'm thinking that uh, there is a piston that is completely gone somewhere and the oil's gone straight past the piston into the, uh, and in and out of the exhaust. Because, yeah, that's not good. Hey, that's not supposed to be in there. That's just water, 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 water. Oh, now there's a little bit of sludgy. That's not, that's not right. Yeah, that's not good either. So we have oil coming out of the exhaust pipe and water coming out of the engine block. Something's not looking very good here at all. There's a little bit of oil now, but it's definitely very, very milky. <laughs> yeah, that's not right. That's not right at all. All right, well, the next thing is to take off these radiator hoses and if the exhaust is full of oil and the sump is full of water then should these be full of exhaust? <laughs> I, don't, I, I just don't know what to expect on this car now so uh, let's uh, disconnect these radiator pipes and see. All right, next is a uh, power steering line. So I'll just undo these ones here. There's uh, apparently normally a retaining clip, but there's no retaining clip on these ones, which again, doesn't really surprise me. Okay, so it's all coming together quite nicely. I've disconnected the power steering lines, all of the coolant lines, uh, taken out all the undercar bracing, disconnected the gear shift cables, and uh, now I think, I think the last couple of things I need to do under here is disconnect the fuel lines and disconnect the drive shafts, and I think we should be mostly sorted. All right, with the car back down again, I'm gonna go through now, I'm gonna pull these shift cables up out of the uh, engine bay. Just need to make sure everything else is off that needs to be off. All 
All right, engine mounts are undone. So now the engine's weight is on my lift table underneath. So hopefully now I should be able to just slowly lift the car up off of the uh, the engine and just 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 lift it up out of the way. Just going to do it very slowly, little by little, just making sure that nothing is hung up, nothing is caught up anywhere, and we've got a nice clearance all the way around. So uh, fingers crossed. I mean, I was going to say fingers crossed I don't break anything, but to be honest, the engine's junk anyway. So um, yeah, let's just rip it out. <laughs> All right, so we have the engine out, and uh, first thing I can see, the oil that was coming down this side, it looks like it's just coming from the oil air separator, so that's a very common problem on these old 911s, uh, or boxes as well. Uh, so that's not a huge concern of mine, but uh, coming around this side, there's nothing obvious at this stage. There's no holes punched into the case or anything like that, so um, what I think I might do is I might uh, pop out these core packs on the side here, pop out some spark plugs and have a look inside the cylinders. First plug, doesn't look too bad. Second one's not too bad either. A little bit oily on this one, let's uh, have a look inside. All right, well, I thought I would try and have a look inside the cylinder with this um, bore scope I bought on eBay. It's just a cheap, nasty uh, Wi-Fi thing, and it's pretty horrible. The lights are too dim to be able to actually really see anything much, and it's sort of, the quality is not great. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit useless. I mean, they are very black cylinders they're going into, but I can't really see anything. Looking into the end, I can see a flat top of a cylinder, uh, all the way across, so um, yeah, something is not right. Something, obviously, if we have a, um, uh, an exhaust manifold full of oil, something's gone wrong in there, but uh, either way, the engine is toast. It's actually sea solid. So uh, I think now I'm going to just uh, undo the gearbox and remove the gearbox from the engine, and um, this is now um, a paperweight. All right, so I did a little bit more investigation. I took the exhaust manifold off and I went up underneath and had a look inside um, the exhaust ports and I can see the, uh, the valves, um, the valve stems actually look dry, but the, um, but the whole, all of the ports, two of the ports on these two cylinders are both really oily. This one is quite dry. Um, I thought maybe it had, uh, it had hydrolocked. So I just uh, put a, uh, bar onto the crank and trying to turn it and there is this thing is sea solid so um, my theory to what actually happened to the engine is um, Wakefield Park that racetrack where I was is uh, prone to killing cars uh, because basically going up the hill there is a uh, it's almost a 270 degree right hand corner so it's a long time um, it's sort of three corners linked together. It's a long time where the oil will slosh all to one side and uh, I think oil starvation is what's killed this. Um, at first I didn't think it would it should do it. I mean this car should be able to handle it. It's standard car with rubbish old shock absorbers and street tires so the g-forces aren't that great but I think it's a combination of being abused for so long that um, you know it overheating all the time and all sorts of bits and pieces that obviously were happening when they blocked in the, the radiator vents and everything else that I think it just um, it just gave up <laughs> and uh, uh, pulling this apart it looks like there was a couple of gearbox bolts that were missing and yeah it, this car has not been treated kindly and um, yeah I think uh, it should do a bit better moving forward which uh, I do have some plans for that but you'll have to wait for that for another episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I, I can't, I could tear the engine down further. I may do that at another stage. At this stage, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> it was a fair bit of work pulling this engine out. It's not too bad. There's, it's a much easier job getting, uh, working on the Boxster than it is on the 911. There's so much more room under there. There's just, you can see what you're doing much better. It's much, much easier to work on. 
uh, considering they're the same year car. And I'll just let you know now that I'm definitely not putting another 2.5 standard Boxster engine in this car. Uh, this is definitely not going to cut the mustard whip. I want to try and get this car faster than a GT3. So if you want to see what I actually put in it, make sure you uh, subscribe and uh, follow along. And um, make sure if you guys need any parts for any of your Porsches, check them out on uh, PorschePartsByJeff.com first and uh, compare prices there. And we'll see you on the next one. See you guys.